It's not uncommon to find that encounters with a very suppressive type during childhood can remain influential later on in life, even when that individual is no longer present. But that's how imprinting works. And so when, when solo processing, and we'll use the following exercise, um, you're going to want to, you know, in lieu of the, the co-piloting, use a, a notebook or a, a flight log to record the data from each of these PCL questions. And so, uh, you, and you can, you know, rather than the way we treat like circuits or whatnot, you can stay on one and, and list uh, multiple answers if necessary, just to make sure you've, you've answered each fully. Um, you know, this isn't one of those where you just kind of hit around and everything. So, uh, and usually, so usually the ones that are like that, see this one's lettered, the, the PCL are lettered ABC, which is something you're not really seeing you know, in the, the lecture. Whereas a lot of times with the circuits, we're actually numbering them, you know, one, two, three, and then zero being self. So, okay. Um, so step A, is there anyone around whom you seem to become sick shortly after seeing them? Step B, is there anyone who is continuously critical of you? And step C, is there anyone who is often telling you how bad other people are? And step D, is there anyone who continuously stops you? Step E, is there anyone who continuously invalidates you? And step F, is there anyone who often provides, when we talked about it, false information? And G, is there anyone who often makes nothing of your efforts? And again, we're talking about invalidation there. So uh, now if you find yourself and you, and you want to, you know, we're not just asking, these aren't really just yes, no questions. They're just kind of worded that way. You know, we're, we're wanting to identify here. So, you know, and that means naming names. And if you need to, to burn this afterwards, again, you know, there's, we want an individual in their processing to feel completely open to exploring whatever, whether it's co-piloted or, or something that's being recorded on paper during solo. So, but if you find yourself writing the same name on several lists, then you would run basically the following processes, and there's quite a few of them. And uh, I'll just kind of go through some of this. But again, when you're dealing with processing, we're still dealing with uh, level three. This is professional course level eight, Conquest of Illusion. If uh, you're using the standalone booklets, pocket book lessons, it's the last lesson in volume one of the Pathway to Ascension textbook. So, um, so if if uh, you know use that, if there's multiple names that frequently appear, just run those names as terminals too. Uh, you know, each as their own separate you know, series of processes. And this is simply processing for your benefit. There's no, we're not trying to even apply any judgment here about, for example, someone else's intention toward us. It's just the very fact that their name is showing up, you know, frequently on these lists, that's sufficient to indicate that there's enough, you know, charge, turbulent charge present, you know, as fragmentation to just, to just run it in processing. So, um, so here, the following series of processes begins with a familiar one from the previous lessons regarding help. And the purpose is not, and again here, the purpose is not to enforce the actual helping of someone, but basically, again, all of the processing is intended to restore the free choice that would otherwise be kind of overridden by some kind of fragmentation. So uh, considerations of help also assist in breaking down the barriers of, uh, you know, any kind of negative reactive emotions. So um, in, in which case, you know, we're not running help in, in for the purposes of you know, trying to help them or, or whatnot or dealing with the actual help. Uh, it's simply breaking down the barriers. Uh, and we talked about the flow factors and so forth in the previous lesson, um, which is going to, it just better makes the, the content or whatever it is, that energetic mass, it's it, the individual is better able to confront it. And, you know, whatever the source of the suppression, the actual what is source of the suppression and as it is. So with the suppressive terminal, uh, and, and that's what you're going to use, uh, you know, how could you help the terminal? How could the terminal help you? How could terminal help others? And how could others help terminal? So 
then we're um, basically this series you're gonna find that we've actually been treating uh, the elements of this so we talked about help before and now we're gonna be doing um, the suppressive terminal with problems so what problem have you been to the terminal and what have they done about that what problem has the terminal been to you and what have you done about that what problem has the terminal been to others and what have they done about that and what problem have others been to the terminal and what have they done about that so and now in the last lesson we talked about holdouts and you know holding back action holding out on communication so um, what haven't you said to the terminal what hasn't the terminal said to you what hasn't the terminal said to others and uh, processing the suppressive terminal for the you know we'll just say action but we were talking about the doing this before um, and usually some kind of it doesn't necessarily have to be a harmful act that we're targeting we're simply trying to fulfill the PCL question here but what have you done to the terminal what has terminal done to you what has terminal done to others and what have others done to the terminal and then uh, treating invalidation talked about that in this lesson and the last lesson that seems to be kind of uh, the, the main area of uh, what we've classified as processing level three so uh, how have you invalidated the terminal how has the terminal invalidated you how has the terminal invalidated others and how have others invalidated the terminal so yeah uh, run those on each of the terminals that come up uh, any of the names now each of these next three processes uh, they contain six alternating PCL so they're run using analytical recall again and in this case uh, they may sometimes uh, they may ask for something that there might not be an available answer for like as a certain question but if there's any turbulence or resistance attached uh, when you go through these then you want to apply what we talked about in lesson seven concerning the flow factors so um, let's see now these are worded they're not worded with the, with the uh, keyword recall uh, or the prompt recall but that's basically what we're asking for here so uh, there's six PCL for each one of the factors so uh, six for liking this six for communication six for agreement and is there a time when you rejected their affection or attention and again we're still treating the terminal the the, the trouble source uh, terminal uh, from from the previous ones is there a time when they rejected your affection or attention so is there a time when you rejected is there a time when they rejected uh, is there a time when you insisted that they like you is there a time when they insisted that you like them so we talked about these these flow factors before enforced inhibited inflows outflows this this is where we just we just run run them uh, and is there a time when you did like them and is there a time when they did like you uh, running trouble sources with communication is there a time when you rejected their communication is there a time when they rejected your communication is there a time when you insisted they listen to you is there a time or is there a time when you insisted that they listen to you is there a time when they, they insisted that you listen to them is there a time when you communicated well with them is there a time when they communicated well with you and then with agreement uh, just run through the same series you know a uh, time when you refuse to agree with them they refuse to agree with you you insisted that they agree that they agree with you they insisted that you agree with them and um, then also you know recalling or spotting a time when uh, you did agree with them and is you know and there was there a time when they did agree with you and then the the over um, you know all of that is Met, you know uh, methods of defragmentation all targeting we talked about ultimate processes for each area so all of that basically softens everything up brings it into view takes care of all the little stuff the ultimate handling would be what could you confront about the terminal what action of the terminal could you be responsible for and, and what about the terminal could you be at cause over so that being you know those those end realizations being kind of the point that drives the whole thing home Okay.
the last real big area that we have to cover for level three and lesson eight. Oh, and everybody just loves this one. Responsibility and justification. This is how your volume one ends. This is pretty much your apex on volume one. And, you know, like I said, this is where, uh, you know, this is, this is the area that has to be handled ultimately to complete level three and professional course lesson eight. So, um, I guess we just get right into this. So we've discussed justification and responsibility briefly in passing, you know, in some of these lessons. So um, uh, here again, we're going to be handling it more directly, and it's basically the the pinnacle point or or what the defining factor was for us. Uh, you know, this is really a list, essentially, of of what level three is meant to to you know be treating in, in regard. So and again, we don't expect to complete total defragmentation first time running through the running through this so okay um, concepts of uh, reach and withdrawal should be familiar um, so to this we also add uh, willingness to be responsible and by this we don't just mean being blamed for things see uh, we're, we're speaking of a much a much higher level uh, idea of what responsibility really means and that's basically willingness to be at cause over things so uh, when it, whenever an individual does something that they consider wrong whether intentionally or otherwise there's an automatic tendency to attempt to justify these actions and we do this when communicating about such things to others you know assuming we you know we didn't hold out on the information altogether but we also communicate these justifications to ourselves and those considerations continue to affect us in the future. So in systematic terms, justification is a mishandling of imprinting or the charge that's accumulated from an event and possibly connected again, like, you know, as a chain to similar events earlier on the backtrack. But it strengthens the influence of fragmentation because the, the, experiential, the experiential data that's, that's, you know, what, what, took place and that was experienced and what is known of that it's being altered rather than confronting as it is so you know reality is being pre presented or perceived as other than it actually is and and the world is distorted that's that's essentially what fragmentation it was a the term was meant to be a the fragmentation of light clear light being fragmented and that's you know it's a distortion of things being what they are and again to defragment we have to treat things it, the, the ultimate key is to treat things as it is so maintaining or compulsively creating any kind of justifications or falsehoods is in a direct conflict to the state of self-honesty that's sought as a means of, of uh, ascension so maintaining any kind of false data or fragmented thought leads an individual toward fragmented actions that are then used to support or prove you know the justifications so uh, the following following processes are best just run as a listing exercise so you know have your if you're running solo you know have your notebook flight book a handy your flight log and um, they're they're gonna assist uh, you know later we're gonna be trying to target you know what the ultimate goal here is to try and target a primary uh, you know what we call the justification consideration and it's something uh, that uh, we'll get into here in this lesson too so um, so just kind of work with this okay so justification in general uh, alternating processes uh, they're 1a 1b 2a 2b so that kind of gives you an idea of alternating them but also running them as a cycle and we also have a 3a and 3b so uh, what have you done to another and how did you justify that? What has another done to you and how have they justified that? 
what has someone done to others and how have they justified that and uh you know justification is sometimes uh you know we have a few different processes here all meant to kind of bring an individual toward the same thing but we again with our systematic processing we have a, a way of kind of shooting at it from various directions and kind of taking taking hold of it better so um, in this case we're referring to as excuses so uh, what do you often use as an excuse what do others often use as an excuse how could you survive without excuses and how could others survive without excuses um, for a willingness process regarding improvement what are you willing to improve what are you willing to allow others to improve what would someone be willing to have you improve and what would you be willing to allow others to improve and willingness with responsibility um, here step a1 what could you be responsible for a2 what could another be responsible for b1 what would you be what would be acceptable to be irresponsible about b2 what would be acceptable for another to be irresponsible about and then run uh, some circuits one spot a time when you made someone be responsible uh, two spot a time when someone made you be responsible three spot a time when someone made another or others be responsible and then finally run um, you know uh, this this thing it's called the glee of irresponsibility but um, it, you know you just try to run it to get it discharged really it's get a sense of the joy of responsibility and get a sense of the joy of irresponsibility and those are conceptual runs so you're trying to get a sense a total sense conception or feeling idea so forth so for most of our participation in shared game universes alpha spirits have been operating from a point of fragmentation there's a mistaken, albeit implanted idea or goal that we must be in competition with one another, that there can only be one or only one will survive, or uh, more for one is less for others. There is, of course, no actual truth to any of this. In order to reclaim the memory and abilities of our past, it's necessary to be able to confront our actions and the actions of others in the past without regret without withdrawing from the imprints and without resorting to justification and falsehood which means without altering them in some way in order to make them more manageable or acceptable in systematic processing we take some of the pressure off a seeker by you know applying these various processes and for for example here you can alternate the PCL with spotting um, you know more positive things but um, domination general process how have you dominated others spot a way to enhance others so alternating that with you know the positives um, domination stopping how have you stopped others spot a way to help others excel and domination inhibition how have you inhibited the survival of others spot a way to aid the survival of others so we talked a little about domination and so forth already, but domination and, and, and superiority, these are not the only games available to the Alpha Spirit. There are better games at higher levels of existence. And um, unfortunately, though, in this present version of the physical universe, you know, beta existence where physical energy and force are quite solid and supreme, you know, relatively speaking or in their apparency, the games of you know domination and superiority are you know most common this is what you you know you encounter the most so um there there is a type there's there is artificial fragmentation that can be implanted you know there's the imprinting that one experiences as a result of uh you know the normal course of of basic incidents and then there's there's also you know implanting that can install, you know, patterns, uh, roles, goals, uh, you know, reality agreements, and so forth. So, you know, all of us kind of have something that we use in order to gain our superiority over others. All of us have some something, even if it isn't the the blatant dominance that you know we we see exercised with force. Um, but there's there's something that we use, and we call that you know the justification consideration. And it's some it's a, it's like a basic characteristic, and it's going to be you know a little bit different 
from one person to another based on the kind of roles they assume or the, the personality they've, they've kind of developed for themselves or had implanted. But um, it's like a basic characteristic that emphasizes uh, in exclusion to other things. So, uh, you know, we, we emphasize it like, uh, uh, and, and again, it could be it could be a basic goal or or so forth, but usually it's it's something that's being used to make yourself superior to others, or something that's being used as a justification that makes others wrong, uh, in some way. Uh, it takes it really takes this far along the pathway. You know, here we are at you know midway in the textbooks for beta defragmentation and you know level three processing level three. Um, but it takes this far, this amount of, uh, when you're actually doing the processing, not just as an education, you know, or, or learning the steps, uh, it, to, to, really, to really confront such a consideration, you know, the, like what we're referring to, this justification consideration as it is. The average, the average human is going to, you know, kind of quickly withdraw from handling such a thing. So um, even... Uh, even the most enlightened among us, though, is still going to have this item on their track. You know, the, the key difference being, you know, whether or not they've kind of risen above the tendency to use it against others. But, um, you know, we're, we're going to be dealing with a more complete understanding of, like, games and goals and universes and stuff um, farther along uh, the pathway at, at upper levels. So, um, but... I can I can tell you now though just at, in a nutshell that these kind of low grade games of, of force and superiority are, are pretty unlightened they're pretty low level games so um, it really causes a, a gradual deterioration of abilities and, a, and the abandonment of a goal uh, because the the harmful acts that are required to maintain you know any type of personality role or or whatnot that's 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 dedicated to again survival. Uh, but using, you know, using a superiority and dominance and so forth. Um, so identifying and recognizing this primary con justification consideration is basically what we use as the requirement for completing systemology level three. Um, and it's a critical key that unlocks like the backtrack when we deal with upper level processing and additional passes through the, you know, the professional course. So um, even if the you know the first time you approach level three the, the what we're referring to as a justification consideration doesn't become just completely apparent um you know don't worry about that uh, it may be that more more layers of, of from the previous processing levels need to be applied before that becomes apparent so um okay we're doing okay on time so the uh this the the game of goals and roles extends back many lifetimes and many universes there's even an observable systematic pattern that we get into uh, later on which um, kind of helps establish why uh, you know an individual assumes a certain personality type uh, or, or a goal and then it's abandoned and then they shift over to another uh, kind of one uh, sometimes the one that that caused them to abandon the first one or seemed you know, they thought that going about it a certain way would make the superior dominating way to do it, and they were overpowered by another way, so suddenly they decided to do it that way, but they originally had wanted to do it this other way. And so, again, uh, <laughs> fragmented goals, they, they can get fragmented easy as, uh, you know. So, key is maintain high level awareness and, uh, you know, actualized awareness, and then, of course, control over your own creations. That's, that's the ultimate key here. So, um, for, uh, so there, you know, again, and we're talking about, you know, stuff that extends several lifetimes, but when we're talking here, pathway ascension and achieving that ba that basic state of beta defragmentation, um, we're, we're primarily emphasizing this lifetime. So, um, you know, there's definitely higher applications for, you know, various things and, some of the PCL when we're doing this traditional piloting, um, you know, will actually ref will put within the processing command line, you know, in this lifetime, such and so forth, because, uh, you know, uh, I referred before about like GSR biofeedback metering and uh, that stuff can actually uh, register uh, 
from anything that's that's available you know to surface from any lifetime so um, but anyways uh, it's it's important when you know to approach this final area of systemology level three with care because the accuracy is the only way to effectively gain any stable progress from it uh, a seeker should be in a state of high awareness having achieved good results from the former processing uh, be well rested and alert free of any active restimulative sources of fragmentation and finally interested and willing to actually discover the answer to this type of thing this type of you know self-knowledge so for this exercise list your answers clearly it's important not to do this while tired because if you suddenly feel heavy or tired while listing then you know you've listed too many answers and this is again in lieu of using your GSR biofeedback meter uh, we're not getting into how to do that that type of processing in this particular uh, course so okay so um, but yeah, if you start to feel heavy or tired while you're listing, um, then you know you've kind of gone too far. It's kind of like the overrun on that. So, um, and then after listing for a while, if you feel irritated or re-stimulated, uh, then you still probably haven't put the answer you're looking for on the list yet. So those are just kind of ways when you're using the process, the listing style processing, and you don't have a GSR meter and you're not being traditionally piloted, this is the way we came up with that seems to work for the solo pilot. The um, the other stuff is usually just a confirmation of it, you know, on a co-pilot observing or using a meter. Um, the same, the, the actual feeling though that the individual is experiencing, um, these are the states that we can look at if, if those aren't happening. And it's good to know this material anyways because, you know, when you're floating there, uh, you know, in the aether between bodies, and you want to keep yourself defragmented and avoiding the getting snapped in the human condition you're probably not going to have a GSR biofeedback meter with you so it's good to know how to do this stuff you know from the ground up so the other the other the metering we mostly just use in uh, with our experiments workshops uh, any research uh, work and then the upper levels the upper levels it becomes pretty critical so you can you can you know get through this without it if you're if you again you've been paying attention you've been doing doing the work um, so now although this is a listing exercise it's not intended to be very long in fact you might realize what the answer is quite quickly but the basic instruction is just to list answers you know in your notebook or flight log uh, below where you've written the question so a lot of times when you're doing uh, work you know you start to do the upper level work uh, with these commands where it's not a lot of uh, where it's like looking for a specific answer or you're dealing with implanting you'd want to actually write write it out uh, within there and not just keeping it as a as a note so you know you've written out the question and you list until you feel like you basically have the answer or you feel comfortable that you've listed enough and then you can um, you know when you when you find the answer the exercise is complete so if you're unsure uh, which among the list you know is is the answer then you kind of go through it and consider each one when in turn when one doesn't seem like it's the right answer just put an X next to it so you don't have to keep considering over it again and at any point while you're checking your list you suddenly you know kind of recognize the answer you kind of get that that feeling that end realization feeling or eureka moment then you just kind of stop working with the list and then you don't need to worry about over on anything um, now of course if the list seems incomplete then you can always add to your, your listed answers until you've you've completed the exercise but the basic PCL is in this lifetime what makes you superior to others now when you have the answer just write it in capital letters in your notebook and underline it because uh, you're going to take that and use it to complete the next process you may also end up using it in uh, upper levels uh, if it's if it's one connected to a chain of, of past stuff that you're wanting to treat so um, but how does you know that answer make you superior how does you know having uh, doing that or, or having that consideration or, or that behavior uh, make you feel superior or make you superior and how do you use it or could you use it to make yourself right and how could you use it to make others wrong so on the other side, we also want to find out what it is about others that you are or might be uh, using against them. So this might or might not relate to the roles and goals 
you know, kind of attached to this, that that justification consideration. But to find out, um, you can do, you know, in in the first example, it was, you know, what makes you superior to others? And this one, in this lifetime, what is it about others that makes them so wrong? And that kind of uh, that kind of answer might uh, kind of clue in uh, as you get up into upper levels too. Uh, what kind of goal set you might be on concerning your your attitude towards others and, and and the way you conduct yourself so now if you aren't satisfied with the resulting answers there's another way of, of using uh, PCL for kind of more of a search and discovery and it's in this lifetime what do you do you use to make others wrong and so um, all of these exercises and processes in this section focus on finding out basically the the seekers justification consideration which is also tied to the roles and goals that they're kind of playing at in this lifetime so what it generally comes down to is a basic consideration that others are evil or others are stupid or they're weak and so forth and you know these these examples would respectively apply to like you know the goals and roles of being good you know if if, if you know others are wrong because they're evil then we may have something you know that we're we're following a certain programming about being good or when others are stupid it's it's us being intelligent um, you know to to defragment so that just kind of gives you an idea of how to kind of figure it to defragment the justification consideration we want to systematically untangle the negative associations uh, of using our abilities against others while still retaining the original you know the the skill or the goal that's attached to it so I mean um, you know, to be intelligent or to be strong wouldn't necessarily be uh, at all negative. Those are positive attributes that we could that we could have. And uh, but if when they're being used as a justification, you know, when they're being used against others, what that ends up doing is is fragmenting it for ourselves. So we originally set out to do something good, and we find ourselves using it against others or in some game of domination or superiority. It ends up fragmenting. Uh, the thing and then of course we have our, our justifications attached to that because of course we had the best intentions at mind you know when we started so to defragment the justification consideration we want to systematically untangle negative associations of using the ability um, but I'll still re you know retaining those and we get more into those like the list of, of goals and terminals like on that you know, farther as we go along in uh, the professional course but um, here before even feeding really any of that to an individual we just kind of want them to you know inspect their life and, and kind of come to some general realizations on their own uh, and then and then we step into it but so you know for justification considerations uh, spot ways that it would make you right spot ways it would make others wrong uh, spot ways that it would help you escape domination, spot ways that it would help you dominate others, spot ways that it would aid your survival, and spot ways that it would hinder the survival of others. So, now the influential intensity that we're speaking of, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, how how influential it is in our lives that's what we're trying to kind of disperse and, and make fall away again total defragmentation may be you know too much of a step on one's first pass but we can definitely soften the intensity uh, just by the awareness again once we realize what we're doing we can see it how it is uh, what is as it is and the source of it we can take take that control so um, when it's first treated in processing, the consideration may actually seem very much like, you know, it may seem very much like the truth about why people are the way they are and the justification for why we are the way we are and and that it, there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. But by spotting this consideration with high level awareness, there's, there's underlying charge behind the idea or the concept and it's you know the the fact that it's being adhered to is true for example you know that combined we've talked about you know two sides of a problem but here are two sides of a justification consideration would be for example you know I'm strong everyone else is weak I'm smart everyone else is stupid and then of course actively using that against them so using uh, 
you know, someone that's with the goal to be intelligent uh, might spend a lot of time just trying to confuse or overwhelm another individual with big words or, or various uh, coming up with more complicated subjects or so forth and, and so forth and in turn making themselves seem right, of course, because, well, look how intelligent they are, but then at the same time doing it to, you know, invalidate, make less of, basically dominate others. You know, this is some really subtle, this isn't always just being the axe murderer. The stuff that's keeping us kind of imprisoned and entrapped in this is not is not always the most, you know, what what you would think would would be doing it. But again, these kind of reality agreements, because a justification consideration um, is essentially like a falsehood that we are adhering to, you know, or or we're using in a in a in a fragmentary state. So even if it started out with the best of intentions or with a positive uh, side. Uh, such as to, to, to be more intelligent or to be stronger, um, the, the fragmentation is what gets in the way of that. So again, defragmenting, defragmenting the goals is not trying to just eliminate uh, what, what someone was trying to do. It's trying to eliminate actually what's preventing them from having achieved them in the first place. So um, the whole while. So... Um, so by, you know, spotting those considerations, you can just kind of, you know, disperse it again, high level stuff, but, um, you know, the, these are the kind of beliefs and, and, uh, agreements. And this is just kind of the first one we start taking apart, but, uh, that, that we have to start treating as you move up along the pathway. So you can see that we're starting to kind of stick our foot in it more. Uh, it's getting a little, you know, a little bit deeper into what we're treating. Um, we haven't touched about, talked about picking up an object or touching a wall in how many hours now? So, um, yeah, we're like, we're, we're really in it. So, um, and, and again, this is where, this is where people are going to, you know, make the greater not. That's why we divided, uh, instead of just coming up with one big omnibus from the beginning, we divided it, you know, volume one and volume two and the booklets because, uh, you know, I would say, oh, I would say somewhere between 30% and 40% of just based on several years ago, we've only had new systemology for a short time, but the kind of work that this is indicating uh, around the time of Way of the Wizard in uh, 2021, uh, a lot of those that, that which, is, which is where the research volumes kind of start, start breaking off, uh, the... Uh, the amount of participation dropped by 30% just from the unwillingness to confront, for example, uh, something that was oppressive or what someone did to someone or, you know, the very idea that we suggest, you know, because, uh, you know, our therapy should just be about what they did to us and look what they did to me. So the very idea that we had the nerve to turn around and ask a person, well, what have they done in their life? Well, that just, you know, so, so, you know, if if you want to be, if you want to be steadfast in this, you're going to, you know, you got to plunge, plunge through and, and just kind of grin and bear it. So, um, so assisting or helping others improve in the same area as your justification consideration is also one way that you can get, uh, more of that total defragmentation early on, uh, you know, even, even after the processing session type work. So, um, you know, it helps, it, it helps to keep the, the goal and skill themselves from deteriorating. Because remember, you know, we set out to originally, we wanted to be smarter or more intelligent. Uh, we wanted to be stronger. We wanted uh, to be, you know, whatever. So, you know, instead of abandoning it, instead of using against others, the solution is to help others become smarter, help others become stronger, help, you know, help. So just the solution, um, you know. And, and how dare I provide solutions and, and not just more problems. But this, this whole area, it's very critical for re rehabilitating the, the spiritual abilities, uh, rising above limitations inherent in the standard issue human condition. Um, so this is not, this is another critical, we talked about the checkpoints on the pathway. This is a critical checkpoint on the pathway and you wanna make sure that uh, you've, you've really treated this seriously uh, before just blowing ahead. Of course, we're going to move forward with the next lesson, lesson nine, break into, so you're going to want to get out or, or plan ahead with uh, Pathway to Ascension Volume 2, uh, where lessons nine through 16 are contained. 
but uh, but yeah uh, this this basically wraps up level three all of it basically uh, treating various a uh, areas kind of some sticky areas or whatnot but ultimately leading up to justification and responsibility and when an, an individual can you know cease the first and take an infinite amount of the second well they'll be gods again thank you the Joshua Free Empire, JFI Publications, in conjunction with Mardukite Academy and the Systemology Society, present the single greatest breakthrough of the 21st century for all humanity. The perfection of a new standard systemology, a complete map for the way out from the bottom to the top, and your key to being an ascended master in this lifetime. Everything you need is contained in three progressive self-guiding courses. The Fundamentals of Systemology Basic Course, the Pathway to Ascension Professional Course, and the Keys to the Kingdom Advanced Training Course. And each should be studied and applied in their intended sequence and order, as displayed in this video. All three courses combined are available as five standard hardcover volumes, but also as 33 installments, since each single course lesson is also available individually as a pocket-sized manual. The Fundamentals of Systemology Basic Course includes Being More Than Human, Realities in Agreement, Windows to Experience, Ancient Systemology, A History of Systemology, and Systemology Processing. The Pathway to Ascension Professional Course, including Processing Levels 0 through 6, includes in Volume 1, Increasing Awareness, Thought and Emotion, Clear Communication, Handling Humanity, Free Your Spirit, Escaping Spirit Traps, Eliminating Barriers, and Conquest of Illusion. The Pathway to Ascension, Volume 2, includes Confronting the Past, Lifting the Veils, Spiritual Implants, Games and Universes, Spiritual Energy, Spiritual Machinery, the Arcs of Infinity, and Alpha Thought. The Keys to the Kingdom AT Advanced Training Course for Processing Level 7 in Volume 1 includes The Secret of Universes, Games, Goals, and Purposes, The Jewel of Knowledge, Implanted Universes, and the Supplementals, Systemology Biofeedback, and Systemology Procedures. The Keys to the Kingdom AT Advanced Training Course for Processing Level 8 in Volume 2 includes Entities and Fragments, Spiritual Perception, Mastering Ascension, Advancing Systemology, and the AT Supplement, Systemology Piloting. All titles are available from your favorite bookseller. Explore new standard systemology today, and may you never be the same.